day it has been. Round seven of Tata Steel is in the books. A lot of decisive results. And without further ado, let's get into your rapid recap for round seven, which is going to spotlight Prague's game against the world champion Magnus Carlsen. Let's dive into the game. It was a very, very interesting topsy-turvy affair, and it started in relatively quiet fashion. It was a Queen's Gambit declined that very quickly turned into a Queen's Gambit accepted. Prague playing Knight F3, which is often a lead-up to a Catalan or to a Rogozin, but Magnus deciding to take on C4, and they quickly transposed into a mainstream Queen's Gambit accepted. E3, A6, Bishop takes C4, Knight F6. This is all very normal. Black counter strikes in the center with C5. And the first really interesting moment uh, of the game, uh, Prague playing B3, which is quite a bit more rare than some of the uh, mainstream moves in this position. The two main moves are a4 to stop b5 and d takes c5, which leads into a very well-studied Queen's Gambit accepted endgame. But Prague going for b3, Magnus responding with b6. I thought that b5 might have been a bit more natural, but Magnus definitely still in his preparation. Going for b6 and Prague going for the hyper Fianchetto, bishop a3. This is where things really started getting interesting. This, of course, threatens d takes c5, which would ruin black's pawn structure. And so for that reason, after b6, bishop a3, Magnus going knight b to d7, protecting the pawn on c5. And Prague immediately pushing with d5, exploiting the fact that the queen is now no longer... Uh, contacting that square and things very quickly start getting concerning for Magnus. So he takes on d5, bishop takes d5. And the problem here is that if black takes on d5 with the knight, then the queen jumps out to d5 and things look very, very dicey here for, for black. After rook b8, there's a very nice move, bishop b2, retreating the bishop to the long diagonal. And if black tries to free himself with knight f6, uh, well, among other things, there's a very nasty check on e5 and after bishop e6, even something like knight g5 or the simple developing move knight bd2 uh, leads to a nasty position for black. It's just hard to get rid of white's very active pieces, and the queen can, can swing to g5 as well. So Magnus deciding against taking the bishop, he decides to go rook b8. Prague repositions the bishop anyway. This is a very, very good move, uh, preparing himself for uh, the inevitable moment where black is going to castle short. So Magnus goes bishop b7, both sides complete their development, knight c3, castles, and now another very strong move by Prague, queen c2. This was the point of putting the knight on c3 yet again. If black takes the bishop, then the bishop is replaced by the knight, and the knight is no less powerful than the bishop. Then white's rook comes out to d1, the queen and the other bishop both aim at black's king. This is also very, very unpleasant, and so Magnus deciding to expand on the queen side with b5. Prague responding to that with rook fd1. Of course, black was threatening b4, and the bishop would have been lost in that case. And after queen c7 came a very, very important moment, perhaps the most important moment in the game. And Fiona, we were surprised here that Prague missed a pretty straightforward, probably didn't miss this move, but he didn't like something about it. And, uh, we got you know, very excited. Him. Both of us wanted to see knight g5 appear on the board with some very concrete threats already against the black king. And, well, maybe you can show us some of the lines that could have happened here. We had a lot of fun uh, during the game looking at this. So let's have, take a look. We really did. And the first really cool line happens after bishop b7. What exactly does knight g5 threaten? Well, white tricks. And then after... Well, after rook takes b7, white swoops in with knight d5, and this wins on, on the spot. And after queen takes b7, uh, there, there's multiple possibilities here, but even, even the simple knight d5 does the trick, and black's defenses are totally overwhelmed. Rook fe8, and now bishop takes f6, and then knight takes f6, and white takes on h7, and white is winning here. So black has to respond pretty immediately to all of these threats. And he can do so by playing h6, but now there's a really pretty line. Bishop takes f7 check, replacing the bishop with the knight. Well, you can't take it because of queen h7 and queen h8. That's called checkmate. And after queen c6, white plays bishop takes f6, and then white takes again. Black has to take with a pawn in order to keep the h7 square protected. After knight takes f7, 
and Queen H7 check, the situation is quite dire. The engine was indicating a cr crazy move, King G7 in this position, which maybe keeps Black in the game, but man, this would not have been fun for Magnus at all. And so we were quite shocked that Prague didn't seize this opportunity to go knight g5. And I will add that it might have been more accurate to put the other rook on d1 precisely because of that long line where this rook from f1 in some variations can lift itself via f3. But in any case, Prague deciding on a more positional approach, playing a4 and trying to contest Black's queen side. Magnus, he said, I'm not letting you put the knight on g5 twice. He immediately plays h6. And this was a subtle turning point in the game. There's a trade on b5. And here, it, it seems like Prague started floundering just a little bit. Queen e2 is a natural move, hitting the pawn, which Magnus defends. And now he sends the e-pawn forward. This still looks very intimidating for Black because e5, well, that's a very serious threat. But Magnus deals with it very expertly. He plays rook e8. And the point is that if White shoves the pawn forward with e5, Black doesn't have to move the knight. Magnus steps back with the bishop. The rook pins the queen, and the pawn on e5 is now more of a weakness than a strength. And this might have been underestimated by Prague, who now decides to move his queen away from the purview of the rook. Another inaccuracy allows Magnus to complete the regrouping with bishop f8. And this is where Prague kind of slides off the ledge a little bit. He plays queen f4, still trying, whoops, still trying to prepare e5. Uh, apologies for that. Still trying to prepare e5. And Magnus, again, he strikes first. That was the theme of this middle game. Magnus kept striking first before Prague could accomplish his plans. After b4, he's forced to move the knight to a4. And now, Fiona, another very important moment. It's like Magnus kept, the tactics kept working for him. He didn't just move his queen back. He no, did something Magnus, a lot more impressive than that. <laughs> instead, deciding to capture on d5, and things really teetered up here, and the tide was starting to turn. Prague, who got such a nice position out of the opening, he missed that one shot, knight g5, Magnus stopped it, and suddenly he is the one who's taking control of the position. Exactly. The bishop has gone from the board, and now the queen from b6 swings to e6, a very nifty move, attacking e4. And... Prague had to go for a very nasty but defensible position with the move knight takes c5. This leads to a, a mass trade on c5, white takes on b8, and after queen takes b3, nobody can really blame Prague for uh, not wanting to play this position, but according to the engine, this was the best chance uh, to, to, to hold the draw. It turns out that the opposite colored bishops do give white pretty decent chances after bishop d4, but Prague trying to keep the tension goes rook a d1, and Magnus immediately bounces. Rook a8, another very, very powerful move, preparing this move c4 when the pawn on b3 is unsustainable. White's entire queen side collapses. Prague steps back with the queen, but in comes black queen. Queen takes c4. And a very important detail is that if white, white takes twice on d8, on d7, black goes rook a d8. And at the end of the day, when the smoke clears, the simple threat of queen e2 followed by rook d1 is utterly unstoppable. Black's, white's pieces are simply too uncoordinated. And so Prague took the opportunity to make some luft, but that gave Black the opportunity to protect the knight. Now Black is up a pawn, he's dominating, and uh, at this point they were entering the time pressure phase as Magnus steps back with his queen, maneuvers it to e6, and... Magnus did give Prague one more chance. So in this position, there was this very, very strong move, bishop b7. But with one minute on the clock, that is so hard to see. You have to notice that white takes the rook, then black. If a white takes the knight, then black takes white's knight, and black is winning. But Magnus going for his aforementioned idea and playing c4. And at this point, Prague had one more chance. He could have taken on g7 with the bishop. Loose pieces drop off. That rook on a7 is undefended. And at the end of this line, there's a fork on d4. Now, it may seem like white is winning. White is not winning because of knight f6. And unfortunately for white, after queen takes a7, knight takes d5, uh, black emerges a piece up. But if we go back in this position, white has a much more resilient defense. And that is the move rook d6 actually going for the h6 pawn. This might have been what Prague missed in time pressure. This position is really scary for black. And black is still probably winning white can swing the rook back to d4 and there's this very important defensive resource knight f8 and white the black is able to make it just in time defending all of the key squares but this would have definitely caused magnus a lot more trouble than the game in the game prague he plays queen d4 immediately allows the knight to swing to f6 counter-attacking the rook and the rest is simple c3 driving the pawn and all of white's pieces are hanging 
and after takes takes they trade queens and when the smoke clears the pawn simply promotes the knight comes into c3 the rook comes into e2 and after rook b1 rook e2 prague resigned since the threat of knight c3 is completely unstoppable what a game by the world champion and prague with a big big chance that he got knight g5 there but that's unfortunately how it goes when you play magnus you get nervous and magnus pounced absolutely mercilessly once he got that chance fiona indeed their first classical encounter magnus walking away with a win that was your record rapid recap of the day and now daniel